Welcome to another video in which we will talk about how to calculate the sample size for your research or for your data collection. Before we move on to our sample size calculation, we need to see the difference between a population and a sample. As you can see that a population is an entire group that you want to draw conclusions about, which means that population is all the people who your research is interested in. Then out of those all people, a sample is a specific group that you will collect data from. Now, it is not possible to collect data from everybody in the population. Therefore, you use a subset of that population and you use it as a sample. The size of the sample is always less than the total size of the population. For example, if you can see on the right side, in the population, there are many people who are involved. You are interested to conduct your research on these people. This is your population. And out of these people, you're not going to collect data from everybody, but you're only going to collect data from a few people, but from the same population. For example, if all the students in one university are your population, and you want to conduct a study on the university students of a particular university. Now, it will not be possible or feasible or financially affordable to collect data from everybody in that university, from all the students in one university. Therefore, what you're going to do is, you're going to collect data from some of the students uh, in that university. But how do you calculate that for how much population, for how many people in the population, how many people should be part of your sample. So for this, uh, you can use the online calculator. How you're going to do it? First, you need to go to Google and search for online sample calculator. So once you're going to go, you are going to find many websites that can help you in calculating your sample size. Let's just go to this first one. The moment you're going to go here, you're going to see that there is a table which is determining sample size. And what you can do is there's already 95% already dead. Now the confidence interval that you will have to put is 5%. Now, just put 5% because for most of the social science researchers, statisticians agree that 5% is the confidence interval at which you're going to uh, accept or reject your hypothesis. Now, the second important thing that you need to give to this table is the population size. For example, if the uh, population size is, let's say, 200 people, how much people should we collect data from? So if you just click calculate, it is going to give you this number, which is 132. Now this means if you have 200 people in the population, you need to collect data from 132 people in order for your research to be having the representative sample of the population. Now let's suppose your population is 2000 instead of 200. Now, when you will calculate, it is going to say 322, which means that for 2000 population, you need to collect at least 322 respondents or you need to collect data from 322 people. Now, let's just take it to 20,000 and then calculate. It is going to say 377. Now, the moment you will uh, keep on increasing the uh, population number, the sample size will be increasing. So let's just take it to two lakhs and now calculate. Now it says 283. We'll add another zero and we'll ask it to calculate 384. Another zero, calculate now. What is happening here is that after certain uh, population, the number is not going to increase no matter how many zeros you add and then calculate. It is going to remain 384. So on the safe side you can say that if you collect data from 384 or some calculations it is 387 if you collect data from 384 or 387 
you can say that at 95% confidence interval and 5% confidence level, you can clearly say that your sample is the representative of any population. So this is how you calculate the sample size and you calculate that how many people should we collect data from in order uh, to conduct our research. For that, you need to have this population number with you. Now, the second thing that you can do here is, for example, if you have already collected data, but now you're interested in knowing that at what confidence level should I accept or reject my hypothesis? So what should be my confidence interval? If this is the question that I want to ask now, what I can do is at 95% confidence level, I need to give my sample size. For example, I have collected data from, uh, let's say uh, 152 people, but the size of my population is 600. So I'll ask it to calculate the confidence interval at which I need to uh, threshold, I need to give a threshold to my significance level. So if you have a 600 population and you have collected data from 152 people, then you need to have 6.87% confidence interval. So this is how you actually determine your sample size. There are other methods. For example, if you go to some books, they have give also given the tables in which there is a population written on one side and then there is sample size written on the other side. So you can always mix and match. Furthermore, there are some other formulas by uh, very famous researchers which also give you formula based on the number of variables or the number of items that you're using in your questionnaire. And then you multiply them with the respondents or with some other formula. So you can always check those formulas as well. But this tutorial was only about determining the sample size online. Thank you very much.